Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are God's Church of Love Online. And Davina, one of our members, is getting ready to bring a word on. She will tell you what. And I'm going to be talking about the helmet of salvation and the armor of God in Ephesians. It's um, chapter 6, verse 17. And I just wanted to share, like, real quick before I actually spoke about the helmet specifically, but um, I remember when I first heard of the armor of God and I would pray like every day I will pray the armor of God like Lord help me to put on my helmet of salvation and my breastplate of righteousness and every day I would pray it but one day I just asked God like oops, sorry it almost fell um, one day I asked the Lord like do I have my helmet on like am I just because I'm praying this do I have this on like how do I know I actually have this on if like if I'm praying this how do I put this on in the spirit and um, I don't remember the time period, but the Lord had started to put things in my mind. Like, first thing was, like, if I'm wearing this armor, in order to put the helmet on, I have to understand what the helmet protects. So now when you think about it, the Lord started giving me scriptures. He's like, your mind, you protect your mind, the thoughts that you think, what you're focused on, the things that you, like, focus on in the day, meditate on, whatever it is that you're thinking about. That's one thing. Um, if it's your eyes, it protects your eyes. The things that you're looking at, whether it's television or, like, whatever you're looking at on the computer, at, around, are you looking and checking out all these people, you know, whatever you're looking at, whatever your focus is on, not only in the natural but in the spiritual as well. Um, the other thing that we got to think of is what we speak. What are we speaking into our physical lives and our spiritual lives? Are we speaking blessings or cursings like the bible says um are we what else do we do with our mouth besides speak we we can confess our sins we can pray we can praise the lord and we can worship and we can sing these are all the things that the story, the lord started to bring to my mind um the helmet protects our ears okay the things that we hear whether it's television whether it's music whether it's the people around us the things that they're speaking to us and are we focusing on those things that the that the world is telling us or that these people in our lives and our families are telling us or even our own thoughts, like what we're thinking of ourselves, are we listening to those things that may say you're a failure, you're not good enough, you'll never mount up, you always mess up, you're just not going to be good enough, or are you going to listen to what the Lord says who says you are uh, wonderfully made, that he knitted you in your mother's womb before you were born. He says that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ and that you are a royal priesthood, that you are anointed and you are blessed, you are made whole and you are heal healed. So we got to think about what the helmet protects. So when we get an understanding, okay, this helps my mind, this helps my, my, my visual you know, focus of where I am spiritually and physically. What kind of things am I putting before my eyes spiritually and physically? We've got to think about these in both realms because they're tied together. When you're in an accident, the helmet protects you. It stops you from getting damaged. That's in essence what she said when the sound uh, went out. We have to, that's what the Lord showed me. Like in order for us to put this armor on, we have to understand what each piece is protecting us. What is a the fundamental purpose of this piece. What is it protecting? How is it protecting it? And then he started to give me those scriptures in the word of, like, let's say, for example, it says, guard your eyes. He gave me scripture and it was like, be careful what you place before your eyes. So if you're sitting there watching shows that have witchcraft or pornography or um, cussing and drinking and all these things, and you're, you're putting these things before your eyes, you're listening to all this stuff, it's like a glass of water. What you pour into this glass of water is, is like, our, like our souls and our spirit and our hearts. What we're putting into this is the same thing that we're going to get out of it. Like the Bible says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In Luke chapter 11, 33 through 36 is where it says, be careful what you set before your eyes. The Bible says, I believe it's Deuteronomy 6, 8, B. The frontlet before our eyes, it should be bound upon our fingers. So thinking of that with our eyes, how often is the word of God before you? How often are you taking a look at the word of God? And that's when we know our helmet's on, because when we have that balance where the things of the world are less before our eyes and the things of the Lord are before our eyes, it's going to be, that's when we know our helmet is secure. 
that's when you know that your helmet is on or fitly secure. Maybe you might have it partially on, but you go get in a car accident and don't have your, let's say you're in a motorcycle, you have it on, but it's not fully on. It's not going to do you much good. Yeah, you might not have as much damage, but it's not going to stay on very well. So you're still very open to danger. So that's how you know that you have your helmet on and have it on securely because you can have a helmet on and not have it strapped. You can have a seatbelt, be in a car, have your seatbelt over your shoulder, and it won't keep you in the vehicle. It's not going to do its job if we're not fitly putting it on. So in order to ensure that that helmet is on, we have to be doing the steps ourselves. God gives us the, the helmet of salvation, but it's our job to put it on. It's our job to keep it on when we go into battle. And that was the other thing. We're not just wearing this helmet for us to just protect ourselves. We're wearing this helmet not just to protect us because we're being attacked, but because we are to be warriors to engage in battle. Okay, so we're to be going not only on the offense, but we're supposed to be going in the defense. And when we're going into the midst of a battle, we might encounter some type of blows to the head. And that is kind of like where the mind comes in. It's like, we're engaging in warfare. You have an enemy that's ready to attack you. Or maybe you're going and doing all the things of the Lord, but the enemy is going to come hit you. For example, today, like, I go into the workplace and there's all this stuff going on. There's this drama, there's this drama, there's this drama. And now in the midst of this, I can either, one, focus like the Bible says. He says, think on the thing. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Where am I going to focus on the negative of the situation or am I going to focus that if Job had to go through a difficult situation, if Job had to get his children killed and lose every possession and have boils on his body and the devil had to seek the permission of God, then we have to remember God is the all authority in every situation that we face. So are we going to think on those things above and think on the things of the Lord and praise the Lord in all of these things? Or are we going to fall into the midst and focus on like Peter in the boat? He was, he was focused on Jesus. He was focused, Lord, I'm coming to you, I'm coming to you. And all he did was pursue, and he walked on water. But as soon as that situation, the waves start crashing, the enemy starts coming, and he takes his eyes off, he takes his mind off and focus on, we start to sink. So that's part of having our helmet on. That's a situation right there that's an actual vivid parable from the Lord that shows you when your focus is on the Lord and not the problems, when your focus is on God and not the circumstance, then your helmet is secure. And just like, this is so crazy, because as we started, the Lord reminded, like showed me, and I never even thought about this until just right now. If you think about your sinuses, like your eyes, your nose, your ears, and your throat, like you go to a doctor, you have usually something with your sinuses that affects your ears. Your ears get itchy. Your throat gets itchy. All this stuff is connected. So in order for us to keep that focus and our minds and our eyes on the Lord, we have to have that our mouth. We have to be listening in that situation, focusing on the Lord and listening at the same exact time so they're interconnected, just like our sinuses and our ears, nose, throat, all that stuff. Our eyes got to be in the Lord and our ears have to be ready to hear what God is saying to us. So our mouth needs to be, one, praising God in the midst of the situation because the Bible says tribulation works um, patience and patience and endurance and that makes our faith greater. We also need to confess to the Lord, okay, Lord, I'm, you know, whatever we had fault in, Lord, I'm sorry I did this, or Lord, I fell in this area, but God, I thank you in the midst of the situation. Because I know that the enemy or anybody else or whatever else had to come and get your approval through this. Or Lord, I praise you in the midst of this, like I was talking with someone earlier. You might be no, seeing that you're going into the lion's den, but are you going to be praising the Lord and thanking him and, and, and also praying and seeking and interceding for yourself and seeking the word of the Lord. But we have, like, you know, we got to be like, Lord, help my mind to be stayed on you. Father God, I pray that in the midst of adversity that I will thank you, that I can praise you. If I don't have it in me, there's been times that I'm like, God, I can <laughs> there, and I'm not happy about this. I don't even want to talk to this person. But if this is what you want, you please give me the strength. 
tell me to do it. I would say it even if I didn't feel it. Lord, I'm going to say this until it becomes true, until you make this happen inside of me, Lord God. I'm going to love this person even though it's hard for me to love this person. I'm going to praise you, Lord, even though I don't feel like I have anything to thank right, you about. I know that I do even though I don't feel that way. And that's the other thing about our mind that we need to remember. We can't just rely on our emotions and our thoughts and how we think about a situation. We really have to step outside of our emotions and step outside of our own personal feelings and our and our thoughts about a situation and that's part of take that's part of keeping that helmet on because a lot of times you know like you want to just take it off because it's just tight or you're getting sweaty and it's getting hot but if you keep it on in the midst of that you're going to be having that protection that you need and so the other thing was confessing like the bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, it was talking about confessing with our mouth. This is part of our helmet. Confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord for us to have salvation. In order for us to have any salvation, one, we have to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know, he died, he resurrected three days later. We have to confess that. And in order for us to receive that uh, redemption from the Lord and that salvation, we also have to confess our sins to God. And that's another part of our mouth. So in order for our helmet to be on, we can't have our helmet on if we're not praying to God. There's no way our helmet can be on if we're not praying to God. There's no way that we can have a prayer life with the Lord and our helmet be on if we're not praying and confessing our sins. If we can't thank God in the midst of our trouble, how is our helmet going to be protected? How are we going to how are we going to be in a difficult situation and not give punches and blows to the head, arrows to the head, all these thoughts be coming into our mind? Some people came to me today, and I was so mad and so frustrated to the point of tears, and I started to get all my thoughts started to be on that. But the Bible says, cast down every thought or any vain thing that exalts itself against the will of God for your life. So exactly. in order to know that, where does your mind need to be? Your mind needs to be in the Word. Where does your eyes need to be? Your eyes need to be in the Word. Where does your ears need to be? You need to be hearing the Word. And we need to start removing out all this other stuff because we can easily be distracted and our minds be focused on something else. And that's all it is. It doesn't have to be pornography. It doesn't have to be alcohol, drugs, sex, and all this stuff. All it has to be is a mere sleight of hand. If I can get your eyes over here so that you can't see the cards that I'm dealing over here, that's all the devil wants. He just wants your eyes over here so you can see. Because once your eyes are here, you can miss that little quick exit to heaven when the Lord comes and calls. It might be... The Lord called you home like that. The Jesus came in the twinkling of an eye, which is a change. So if he can get your eyes here just for the slightest second, distraction and busyness is just as simple as being a drug addict, being an addicted to porn, um, being a child abuser, or any type of thing. It's as simple as being distracted. And any of us are capable of getting distracted in our mind and in our work and in our lives and all these things. So in order to have our, our helmet on, and this is something that, it's crazy because I've been struggling with this in the midst of being a mother of a lot of kids, having a big family, going to work at the schools, trying to like be a leader in, these, in, in, in my workplace. And it's so easy for us to be distracted, but this is a message to myself as well because out of all the days, my, one of my hardest days, here I am, the Lord speaking to me, through me, by saying, hey, don't get distracted. Don't let the littlest things keep you off of me. So... It's that simple. We got to remember to reset. It's all right. Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I, I kind of started getting off on a, on a road. That's where our confession comes in. We're not always going to hit the mark. We're not always going to get it right. But that's where we got to remember that God says, if you confess your sins and believe in your heart and come to me, I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will heal you, cleanse you, clean you, and make you whole. So we got to remember those things. And that's how we keep our helmet on. It's not just... I did it in the morning and my helmet's on. It's like, I do it in the morning. I, I'm going, going, going. Let me reset. Here, let me adjust. I was wiggling. My strap came a little bit loose. Like constantly checking throughout the day. This is a, a full day process of keeping our armor on. And it's not just to be on the defense. Because we also need to be, like the Bible says, it's not about us. This is about the kingdom of God. We're his warriors. We're his children. So we're not only just here to protect ourselves and get into heaven and that's it. We're here to get it, be a light to the Lord. If we're being a light and the salt of the earth, then that means we're doing something for God and not just for ourselves. So we're those warriors that have got to go in and we leave no man left behind. If we see somebody that's struggling, 
and the Lord puts it on your heart, like you get this feeling like maybe I should pray for that person, and the Lord puts it on your heart that you need to go actually pray with that person, it may be awkward, but go pray for that person. Hey, I'm, hey, you know, like, I, do you mind if I pray with you? Or maybe it might be from a distance. You might just pray for that person from a distance. But those are the things that we're doing. Praying is what you do with your mouth. Confessing is what you do with your mouth. Praising and thanking the Lord is what you do with your mouth. Focusing, being in your word, keeping the Bible as a front line before your eyes, listening to the word, listening to worship, taking time to be quiet and listening to God in the quiet and loud times in our life, the difficult times in our life, Stop, stopping. And it's like the horse, you know, when those horse, the horses and they have those little blinders right here on the side to keep their, their tunnel vision. And sign language, this is focus. Your hands are here and it's just, that's what it needs to be. So we got to constantly remember, we got to take it off and put it on the Lord. So that's a constant daily thing that we go through. And when you fall short, remember, the Bible says all fall short of the glory of God. You're not always going to get it right. But a righteous man falls seven times and he'll get up an eighth time. So how many times are we going to do fall? Probably more than we can count. But be a good soldier because a good soldier never lays down. They'll continue to get up. And if you see your brother and sister struggling, help them out. If you're struggling, don't be ashamed to cry out to your brothers and sisters. Two are better than one because if one falls down, the other can pick them up. If they're cold, they can cut it with each other and keep each other warm. And if you get a threefold, so you got to remember part of that helmet being on your on your head and keeping your helmet on is not being afraid to ask for help. The Bible says to confess your sins one to another so that you guys may be healed. If you're struggling with addiction, whatever kind of addiction it may be, share it with one of your brothers and sisters. You never know. They might, the person you might share it with might have been through that or is going through that. And by you doing that, you can get the help that you need because that's the physical reassurance of having someone there besides just the spirit of God. That's why he has the fellowship of brothers and sisters. That's why he has you to have a mouth. You got to be able to reach out and ask for help. You can't let the enemy, that's what the enemy is going to do. I remember there was a time I, I stopped smoking for a while and then I started smoking because of the situations going on. I was just stressed out. There was a lot going on. And then I started smoking again after I prayed the Lord and the Lord delivered me, delivered me and took that from me. And then I was feeling ashamed. But then I started to smoke, and I was trying to stop, but I felt too ashamed to bring it to someone, even though I wanted to. And the enemy almost secluded me away from the body of Christ because, because I didn't want to ask for help, and I felt ashamed to share something. But, you know, when I did, it was that burden lifted. And I got prayer. I got people like, hey, you know, we all fall down, and, and everybody prayed, and it was fine. But that's where part of our, your helmet is, is relying on the actual hands and feet of the body of Christ that are your brothers and sisters as well. So Amen. basically, in order for us to keep our helmet on, we need to be focusing on the Lord, focusing on the things that are above, keeping the word of God with you, listening to God in every situation. Don't be afraid to ask for help from your brothers and sisters. Cry out to the Lord in every situation. Give praise. Confess your sins. Pray to God. And that's just about it. I hope that was you guys.